fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Budapest, Hungary. You've got the castle up on the hill behind me, you've got amazing architecture throughout the city, you have a great thing and tons of stuff to do when you are here in Budapest. But you know me, I like to talk about the don'ts of when you go places, and so today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Budapest. And my first don't for visiting Budapest is don't forget to look up while you wander. Anyone that likes architecture, it's a dream city for them. This was like the secondary capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, so a lot of the emperor's money came in. I mean, check out the castle behind me. I mean, it's unbelievable. But it's not just limited to the castle and the main pedestrian streets and stuff like that. No, the whole city has just amazing architecture that you can check out, whether you're, yes, going up to the castle, or going to St. Matthias' church up there, walking around the castle district, or coming downtown and seeing the buildings. St. Stephen's Basilica, where St. Stephen's, they have St. Stephen's hand. It's a beautiful church. When you walk around, you'll see architecture after architecture after architecture. That's just wonderful. So make sure you don't just stay on the pedestrian street and then walk across the chain bridge and then go up to the castle and that's all you do. Go and explore the city because the architecture everywhere you go is just so cool. So make sure you're not just on your phone watching the maps. Just look up, wander around, get a little lost, find some of these great buildings here and you will enjoy that. And it's funny that I talk about wandering around and getting lost and seeing all the architecture when the second don't I have for you is don't be lackadaisical with your safety here in Budapest. Now, Budapest doesn't necessarily have the greatest reputation for being the safest city in Europe and things like that. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've been coming here for 20 years, and this city has made a remarkable change, especially even in the last 10, 5 to 10 years. It's got a lot safer, a lot less scams and stuff like that, but you do need to pay attention. You know, if you're coming out late night, that person who wants to help you probably isn't looking out for your best interest. The taxi drivers, I mean, I'll do a whole don'ts about them. But you do need to be careful because it's a big city. So when you're up there by the castle and there's a change in the garden, all of those people are around, yeah, I mean, that's pickpocket. Like, that's just easy pickings there. Or maybe when you're on the pedestrian street, you'll see that. Okay, so you do need to be careful, especially if you're going to be here on the weekends. A lot of people come here on the weekends for partying because it's a very affordable place to be. Lots of good drinks and clubs and stuff like that. So it can be a little bit rough with some of the tourists that do come here. So do have a heads up for it. But honestly, probably the one way you'll probably get the easiest way to get your money taken from you with you without even realizing you did something wrong at first is my third don't. Don't forget to validate your metro ticket when you get into the metro. So when you go and take the metro and the public transportation here goes all over the city, so they got the trams, there's a tram line behind me, you might see some go by, there's buses, you got the metro, it's one of the oldest in Europe. I mean, it's cool to take and stuff like that. But don't forget to validate that ticket. So you'll buy the ticket at the ticket machine and then you'll see this orange box there and you'll, you'll just stamp it and go in. There's so many different tickets that you can buy and stuff like that. It can get a little confusing. So they have ticket people there that check, do you have a stamp ticket? Do you have a stamp ticket? And they're all over the place. This isn't like Vienna where you like walk on and like, oh, no one will catch me. Ha 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 ha. No, they've got tons of people checking. So don't get a spot on the spot fine for not having a validated ticket. Or if you try to use an old ticket, that's not going to work. So just get like the 24 hour ticket or the 72 hour ticket. Get something like that so you don't have to worry about it. You just hop on, show, go, and you're good to go, okay? Now, my fourth don't for you is don't forget to bring your swimsuit. Look, this city has been famous for centuries for the waters here. They have all kinds of bathhouses here you can go to. And yes, there's the big, huge ones you can go to. I'm sure I'm showing pictures in the background right now. You have those you can go to, but the thing is there's smaller ones as well. So if you don't want to have you and your 200 closest friends swimming together, they have smaller ones, but I love those things. You get massages there. They have warm pools, cold pools, just normal pools out, especially if you're here in the summertime to go to those. It's just like, oh, let me enjoy. They are really great and they're for all ages. So definitely go, but don't forget, you got to bring your swim trunks, okay? So make sure you have something to go and enjoy the bathhouses here because honestly, it's one of my favorite parts of the city. Now, another one of my old favorite parts of the city was actually my next stone is don't forget to bring some going out clothes. This city is famous for its nightlife for good reason. No matter what you want to do, they're going to have something for you. If you want bars, if you want clubs, if you want concerts, if you want classical concerts, rock concerts, rave kind of things, they've got everything for everybody at night. 
you want to sit on a square and drink some palinkas, that's the local schnapps, or some of the red, the good wine they have here that they make in Hungary, you can do that and sit back and relax by St. Stephen's Basilica, just watch the people go by. I mean, it's just awesome. But there's so much nightlife and so much to do in the evening that you don't have to worry about it. But I will say is you might want to bring more than just your t-shirt and a pair of shorts because you want to go out and go to some of the nicer clubs. They might ask you to look a little bit nicer, okay? Now my next don't for you has to do with the taxis. And I'm just going to tell you this. Don't use the taxis unless you have to because there's so many issues that tourists have had with the taxis. I know when we came in on the, on the train here, the guy's like, yeah, 20 euros. I'm like, 20 euros? Where are we going? Like, Edgar or something like that? What are you talking about? The guy's like, well, then I guess you're not going anywhere. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like a three euro taxi ride where we want to go. You have a lot of uh, frustration with the taxi drivers here sometimes. My students, I have students that are here right now, and they've been telling me their stories that taxis are refusing to take them places. So you do need to have a heads up, and you'll see the taxis here. Another don't for the taxis is don't think all the taxis are the same, okay? You'll see what are called freelance taxis. It actually says freelancer on the side, and on the top of the yellow cab, it just says taxi, like black sign with taxi on it. What I recommend is use one that actually has a company name on the top and a company logo on the side. Those ones tend to be more on the up and up, also, those ones, you can get an app on your phone and just do it that way, okay? So you can use that to get around, okay? Because don't think all the taxis are the same. Also, I know a lot of people think, well, I don't use taxis anymore. I use Uber. Well, don't expect to use Uber when you're here. It's actually not in the city anymore. Even though you wish it would be, the Uber is not here. There's no Lyft, none of those things right now. So just get the app for the taxis and use that if you do need to use them. Or if you're gonna be going places from your hotel or coming from the airport, maybe arrange with your hotel transport to make life a lot easier because they probably are gonna do a, they'll have better luck finding a good, respectable taxi for you than probably you will. Now, one of the little things that some people like to point out to me when I'm here is, you know, I keep saying Budapest, 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 Budapest. That's how we say it in English. But the thing is, don't call it Budapest to the locals because for the locals, it's Budapest, like an S-H at the end. Budapest, okay? So just letting you know for that one, if you want to be like cool with the locals, it's one of the things you can do. And I guess kind of going along with that silliness is don't confuse Bucharest, which is in Romania, with Budapest, which is here in Hungary, where I am now. I've been to both places. Budapest is way better for tourists than Bucharest. No offense, Romania, there's some cool stuff in Bucharest, but Budapest is definitely, definitely a much different city than Bucharest, and the locals won't really be like too happy with you if you do call it Bucharest. So remember, you're in Budapest, not Bucharest, all right? Now, another thing with this Budapest kind of thing is, what you need to realize is, over there on the hill, that's Buda. This side of the river is Pest, okay? And the thing is, well, the don't I have for that is, don't think they're the same. Though they're one city now, there's definitely a different vibe in each one. Over there on the castle, in the Buddha side, yes, you have the castle, the church over there. Seems like nicer hotels and things like that, but there's very little shopping. There's a lot fewer restaurants and stuff like that, but it is kind of a much more calm setting over there. Whereas here on the Pesh side, man, this is where the pedestrian streets are, the, the shopping streets are, a lot of the clubs and bars and stuff like that. This has got more of the action over here. So it's more like during the day, you're kind of enjoying over there, and then at night, you come over to Pest. Okay, so just want to give you a heads up for that as that could influence where you stay and where you pick your apartments and stuff like that or your hotel. Now my next dome for you is if you're going to be going up the hill, you'll notice that the castle's way up there and you're like, do I have to walk up there? No, you don't have to walk up there. There's a funicular that goes up. And my don't for the funicular is don't worry about the wait. Yes, it takes some time to wait for the funiculars to come up and down and take people up and there probably will be a long line, but it takes you right up there, drops you off right at the castle and you're good to go. So, don't worry, it's worth the wait. Now, if you don't want to do the wait, you'll see there's like golf carts, like extended golf carts that will offer you like, oh, hey, we have a hop on, hop off service. We'll take you up there, we'll bring you back. My don't for that is, don't expect to get up and down as quick as you think you would. Hence why I recommend taking the funicular, okay? Because when you go up, they leave when the golf cart's full, they take you up there. And they go every five to 10 minutes, kind of. And the thing is though, if you're here busy season, yeah, there's like 30 people waiting to get that next mini golf cart kind of thing to go back down. You might wait for two or three or four turns before you can actually get on one. And I did see quite a few tourists getting upset with each other on there. So do have a heads up for that. Also, if you're gonna take the little like, golf cart thing up there, or you know, the little shuttle up there, if you're sitting on the back, 
don't freak out because the cars are coming up with you like this. You're like, oh my God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And then they pull over to the side. So just have a heads up. Now, when you are up there on the castle, there are museums up there, all kinds of stuff. My next dump for you would be, don't feel that you have to go to all the museums up on the castle hill, okay, up by the castle or in the castle. Cause some of them, I mean, they're good, but some of them are a little bit too extensive, if you know what I mean. So have a heads up for that. But definitely you wanna make sure you go over to St. Matias' church and you see the lookout there. It is gorgeous. That's your Instagram Budapest kind of thing. Cause from there you can look over and remember I talked about the architecture, the coolest architectural feature of the city is the parliament. The Hungarian parliament looks like it's straight out of some like old Batman movie. It is so cool. Probably one of the coolest, uh, definitely the coolest parliament I've seen in the world, but it is awesome. You get a great view from up there. So definitely maybe just use the castle area to explore, but it is kind of a neat place to go. So definitely go up there. Another museum I definitely say to don't skip, I guess I would say is don't skip the House of Terror. Now the House of Terror, I know when I first say it, I'm like, no, 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 it's not a Halloween thing. The House of Terror is actually kind of a museum of terror in terms of the fascists and the communists when they ran Hungary, what are all the horrible things they did? And so you start to understand more about Hungarian history and what went on here. And you really learn a lot when you're there. I've been there a few times and it can be very moving and really informational. They got all kinds of stuff to help you out in English and a Hungarian if you want Hungarian too. But it is really, really an amazing museum. So if you're gonna to go to one museum here, that's the one you don't skip. Go to that House of Terror, okay? Now my next stone for you is when you come to Budapest, most people just kind of stay in this historic area. Like I said, they go from the castle to St. Stephen's Basilica and that's about it. Maybe walking on the pedestrian street. My don't for that is, you know I said don't forget to wander, but don't forget to explore outside of Budapest itself. There are some pretty cool day trips. You can go to Eger, and which is about I don't know, two and a half hours on the train. I know it seems long, but it's not that long. If you got your own car, it's a lot faster to get out there. And you can see the, the castle ruins there and the, the cute city, or the good cute village town. I don't know, it's about the it's town size kind of thing to see another place. Also, there's Roman ruins uh, out, just outside the city you can see when you're here. Do you know there's actually underground caves thermal caves underneath here. Yeah, you can go down there and see the caves. I mean, it's just really a cool thing. And so just make sure you don't just see, you know, the things you see from outside. Go in to see more outside the city. And speaking of little hidden things, if you're walking around and you get a chance to peek in some of these buildings, like just going in the entryway, you are gonna see some of the coolest architecture inside, just like the waiting area kind of thing. Like, oh man, look at that, look at that. Cause it is such great architecture outside of the buildings but also inside. So if you can see some of those like atriums and stuff, definitely go check it out. Totally cool, the foyers, totally awesome. Now my next couple of don'ts actually deal with the food when you're here. One don't is don't be anti-paprika, okay? Don't be anti-peppers, okay? Look, the Hungarians love peppers. They love paprika, they love that spice. You'll see a lot of your food and a lot of your sauces, a lot of your soups will have a red tinge to it. That's because of the paprika and more paprika and maybe a side of paprika that you can put in two more, put up more paprika. They love it here. And it's in a, uh, not all of the Hungarian foods here, but a lot of them, okay? Don't be surprised. Now there is great food and you wanna have some. So make sure you have the goulash, you have the chicken paprikash, okay? You're gonna have all this really good meat with a cream, based paprika sauce and, and pepper sauce and you'll have that but the thing is it's really good but i will say this don't feel bad if you get burned out of it because it can be a bit much okay don't be shocked if you think you see more italian restaurants here in budapest than you see hungarian restaurants here and it's crazy there's italian places all over the place so if you do get tired of the paprika you have other options, okay? But don't get tired of it. Go and enjoy the local food because it's so good. And if you don't want that, get the pancakes with meat inside. That's so good. Oh, and, and another don't. Don't skip dessert. Oh, man, the sponge cake. Oh, my God, the sponge cake. It's like a trifle kind of thing with a sponge and cream and sponge. Oh, it's so good. So good. I ate it too fast. I didn't get the pictures, so I'm sorry for that. But I did get pictures and video of the streusel I had that's here. They make awesome strudel when you're here. It is so good. So don't skip out on the dessert, okay? And what's cool is you don't have to worry about skipping down the dessert because don't think you're gonna bust your budget when you come here to Budapest. Now, I'm not saying Budapest is super cheap. No, like the rest of Hungary, that's pretty super cheap. But here in Budapest, it's an affordable place. I find the price is very fair, especially for such a cool city with so much to do. You actually do, your money goes pretty far here. So just this matter of like paying attention to the bill to make sure what you're getting. Because honestly, we've had a great time here. We haven't spent hardly any money when we've been here. So it's been great. And that's why I understand why is so many tourists come here for a weekend away. I see a lot of backpackers here, you know, like college kids coming and backpacking and, and buddies coming for their weekend parties and stuff like that. Because 
it's cheap, there's lots of stuff to do, there's a great nightlife, all these kind of things. It's really great. And you don't have to bust your budget, so that's awesome. And my last don't for you is, don't expect to use your euros. Look, here in Hungary, they have the Hungarian forint, okay? So they have their own currency. And though you'll see prices in euros a lot of places, not every place takes euros here, okay? So you're gonna have to get some money out, all right? Now, also you may say, well, I'll just pay with credit card. Again, and I guess that would be another don't. Don't expect to be able to use your credit card everywhere. Now, a lot of places you can, okay? But not everywhere, so do have a heads up and get some money out. And I guess I should probably talk about the don'ts with the money to finish off for real, is one, don't expect all the exchange houses to do the best job for you. Make sure you're looking at the exchange rates and the commission to see what gives you the best exchange rate overall. That's gonna be important. Another don't I have for you is don't take the conversion at the ATM. When you go and you go to the ATMs, you'll put your card in. They'll give you these crazy amounts. You're like, no, no, other amounts. Get an amount that you really will actually use. Like, you know, take out like 100 euros worth of stuff instead. Take that out, and then they're gonna. What they're gonna do is they're gonna say, "Hey, do you want to have that converted to your local currency? Because you can take it out, and we'll charge you in euros for it, or we'll charge you in dollars for it." Do not do that. Always decline the conversion. Don't do the conversion because they will totally rip you off. We're talking like 10 to 20 percent difference in the exchange rates. So let your bank back home. Let them do that, not the ATM, okay? So don't mess around with that because that can make this relatively cheap vacation a bit more expensive, all right? So I hope this helps you know a little bit more about coming to Budapest, what you don't do when you're here, but what you don't not do when you're here as well, huh? We like to keep it positive here at Walter's World. Anyway, I gotta take off. I've had a great time here in Budapest. I hope you do too. If you wanna learn more, we got a video on the mistakes of Budapest that people make. We've got a video on what to eat when you're here. We've got what you should know before you go to Hungary. All kinds of stuff on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. We hope you have a great time here in Budapest, but we know you will, even if you're anti-paprika, like my dad. Oh my God. I can't bring my dad here because he hates peppers, and I'm just like, I ain't gonna deal with that. Anyway, bye from Budapest. Oh, hey, if you like travel videos like this, why don't you hit that subscribe button? We put out new travel videos every Wednesday and Saturday, and we really appreciate all the likes and subscriptions and comments and stuff like that. And if you've got other don'ts for Budapest, definitely put it in the comment section below so we can help out other travelers, all right? So thank you very much, and a special thank you to all our patrons on Patreon who make travel videos like this possible. If you want to figure out how you can, or find out, how you can help us keep making honest travel videos, go to patreon.com slash waltersworld to find out more. And I'll say bye from Budapest. Or, sorry, Budapest. <laughs> bye.